Okay, now we're going to kick off. This is a little, uh, our opinion on the Polish situation where the Jews brought down the uh, jet going to Russia. And um, they had landed the plane elsewhere. How's that look? Can you see yourself or not? I can. <laughs> and I really don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> can I get you living on? Hmm. Got another truth, though. Well, we did this. We exposed it all. It's all up there. Um, oh dear. Do it now. I will. Just getting to the bottom of the... Um, This guy says it here. Are you recording this? No, well, no, because there's no sound here. No, oh, you can get the sound on this. Just do screen capture, nothing else. All right, this uh, comment here says the borders were closed during martial law. I had my luggage packed when it was declared and it took me four years to be allowed to leave Poland. This person says I disagree with this analysis which is pointing fingers at the Russians. Kaczynski was naughty. He didn't want to join the IMF or to install anti-missile systems in Poland which pissed off the US. The Health Minister Kopacz refused to vaccinate Poles against the H1N1. And it says, I bet Kaczynski okayed that. It was a coup d'etat. Yeah, I, so after this um, crash, we're looking at the crash side within minutes you have the dude that we just watched with the uh, video that he took. Now, he ended up being stabbed to death in a hospital after. The guy who took the movie? The guy that took that video was the first on the scene. Um, Good Lord. Uh, what was I going to say? You, you would think, well, there were no bodies at the scene. You heard the four shots of the crew or whoever it was that was on the plane, the, the crew. But there, no, there were no bodies strewn all over the place. It wasn't like the plane was smashed into tiny little bits or pulverised into dust. You would think there would be bodies all over the place. Is it not the same as what that happened in Pennsylvania with the, um, the uh, Israeli hijacking two mm. planes with their system, which is in all the jets, mm. right? through this clown that's running for president, Romney. Romney, the mm. creep. Through a patent on a device that was through the patent office of Mrs. Clinton. Oh, she owns the patent on it. She took it or got it, whatever she did. Anyway, they're all complicit, but yeah. So they landed stuff. the plane, took the people off. All they got to do is work out the speed between the takeoff point and the landing point. You know how fast the plane flies on that normal flight? What time a troop arrived there? Did it arrive at the crash site late by, well, say, enough time to unload passengers, let's say eight or nine minutes, mm. at the point of the gun? Mm. Now, with the plane that's supposed to go down to Pennsylvania, that was just a rocket. Mm. But where's the passengers? They were sacrificed also. Mm. Where's the 300,000 people that's missing out of uh, Louisiana? Yeah after Katrina and why were the 96 on the flight in the first place all together on the same plane it's got to be the dumbest decision ever would dumb Pollock come to mind mm. well. to honor Soldiers that were all shot dead in Russia mm. some 70 years before. Mm. And I think the time 
or the date was the 10th of April that the plane went down? Yes, well, that was the day of the memorial. So it was 70 years to the day. And it was also the same the day site. when Cook landed on Easter Island. Right, now the, no, uh, the site of the memorial was changed three days earlier too. It had always been in one location and then three days earlier they were notified that it was changed to another location. We meant change another location, they're going to the grave site, weren't they? No. Apparently the memorial where they had always honoured it had been changed. What's the point of going then? Well, exactly. Now there's controversy, nobody knows what happens to those soldiers or who, who did what to who. The Russians of course are, are claiming it wasn't them and blaming Nazi Germany and yet they're in Russian territory and well, the Stalin Russian, was... The Russian Jews. Mm. Well, sir, that's all. They're behind everything. Yep. <laughs> well, this. That's why you got to root them out. Round them up. And mark them. The mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Don't have anything to do with them. Mm. Don't let them in any power. Nothing. So 666 Put branded. Put a little doll. 666 branded across there. Mm -hmm. And. Could do it. They are behind everything. Well, that young reporter that's gone underground all the time because he infiltrated into the synagogue. <coughs> now, what's your opinion on him? Is he genuine? Seems to be. Has he said anything that's malicious? About what to who? Yeah. Malicious? Hmm. Well, it just seems to be the truth. He's not afraid to call it what it is. And well, it's exactly the protocol, isn't it? What he said that is, it is the protocol, and that's what the enemy board said. Hmm. They're doing it. Hmm, absolutely. Get away with it because they are gross evil. You do not believe that human beings, which they're not, is the point, could do that to other human beings. Take well, them off a plane. Take them into a hangar and then start guillotining. Well, well, by definition, a human being is the lowest of the low. Anyway, I looked it up in Webster's, and and they're right about it. that's why they don't refer to themselves as a human being. We're all human beings, which mean we're filthy monsters. When in fact they are the filthy not monsters. And what are we? Individuals. The real man or true woman. Mm. Hello. All out of your law. Mm. Okay, so what's your opinion on what happened in Poland? Well, mass stupidity to start with on there, Yeah, totally. Uh, but it, 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 I remember at the time uh, reading that, yeah, Kaczynski was resisting the IMF. This is two years ago when all of Europe has been approached by the IMF and foisted with more debt and that's what all the rioting and revolution has been, but he refused and what we just watched in the documentary was that he was gunning for a sovereign and independent Poland. Right. You can't do yeah, that yeah. in the New World Order. Mm. So, so he was doing what Hitler was going to do? Well, he was... Taking care of Polish business, hmm. worrying about Poland and not anybody else. Sovereign, yeah, sovereign and independent. Yes. So along comes the Jew world order. Can't have that. Point the fingers at Russia. So, do you make every nation on earth sovereign and independent? I do. Yeah, Fuck off Jews. Hmm. You're out of here. It's the end of the New World Order. Hmm. Those nations that are... That so are they, 
let's get this straight. They they took the plane, work out the time it crashed, the time it took off, add eight or nine minutes, let's say six point six six minutes for the plane to land, unload, and take off again, then speed up and try to overtake the missing six point six six minutes and then crash. Of course they moved the the uh, cones that they focused on when they're bringing a plane in for a flight. And then you see how they can make fog, mm. which they did. Mm. And therefore they landed what they thought was coming into an airstrip, was coming into the bush. Mm. There's only four men on board and they had to go and shoot them. Mm. You heard at least three gunshots. Well, they had four. Well, four, four mm. gunshots. Yeah. These men were in the part of the fuselage where it's upside down. They were probably hanging upside down. Mm. And that's what they did. And the leaders of the country, they took them away, put it all on video as they beheaded them. The Jews. Mm. You're an animal. Same as doing a chicken. Matter of fact, I'd rather do you than a chicken. You can think. Mm. Now, Russia took over the investigation immediately, so they had to go and get their bodies from the Russians. But did they get their bodies from the Russians? Well, they weren't at the crash site, were they? No, there were no bodies at the crash site. So was the bodies that were given back and all beheaded? Don't know. Who knows? Wouldn't that be something? Mm. Well, we saw... Would uh, you think that Mossad would be guilty of doing something on that? Oh, absolutely. Well, we see uh, in that uh, video with the pedophile rings that Obama and Romney are involved in, the dude there whacked out MK Ultra. What he did to the uh, man he killed, sent the head somewhere and the hand to Canadian politician Stephen Harper. Got any scissors in No. Right. So. So that is why in Toronto, the Queen has a little beheading down by the lake. Yes, a head floating by, turns up the day after, exactly where she had been. And that man had contacted us. For some reason, I just stuck those two together. <laughs> Which man, Beth? One from Cambridge. Why was that Cambridge, remember? And, William uh, Coons. The Indian boy who sent... Yes. Hmm. Huh? He was the now last. Now we've got... I was in Port Alberni, the third capital of... Well, I think it's higher than that, of witchcraft in North America, right? where Tracy is born. Hmm. Where Ireland just fits right in. Uh, lost it. Hmm. I drove a cab, spoke to Indians at Brett School there. That's what they used to do. Hmm. Genocide. And then you got the Arnett character. Who knows? Is there at the same time as I am a hmm. man who is in the public eye, his wife, accusing him of threatening to kill her unless she acknowledges him as being Christ, which hmm. I didn't do. So he's part of it. This Queen and the Pope are going to be on trial in the UN or something. He's going to be there to give witness. He never shows up. Didn't happen. So it's just a staving off of, of the penalty because Arnett was on the job. I know I'm not so evil because I met one. Hmm. It's a sad and sorry state of affairs. Huh? Just watching the Ukraine Parliament 
two years ago. Mm. We just witnessed that throwing food at each other and and then all of the armies coming out in their combat gear. Every they're all men. Polish. No, no, I'm talking about everywhere. It's all men. Of course not. Men, 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 oh, men, men in wars. Men in wars. It's all men. So, babe, how do you feel about being the one of just a handful of <laughs> real men on the planet? <laughs> oh. Yeah, super. <laughs> Someone's going to do it. <laughs> you got to have a sort of a centrefold idea. <laughs> yep, the lovers should go to the pit. Hmm. No wonder yeah, you yes. castigated them as Jesus and condemned them. It's the men you were talking to. They made a mistake with forgive the father for they know not what to do. I think they fucking do. Mm. I'm a judge, I'm not going to change my apple part. So. <laughs> Back to you. Earring. Okay. What's what? What have we got? Is it there, that foam thing. Foamy, is it? Dicky. Oh, Dicky foam. Where did you find it? A bit on the back of the computer. Oh, okay. Try it now. All right, I'll try it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. For now, no, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> now, what's this? We've got um, I saw the theater and the Indian lady wouldn't have been as old as me. I saw the theater when we went to the movies. Up all my summer. Where are you talking about that? Little Otoka or something. Anyway, a little lady. Oh, yes. We went to the movies. A little, yeah. little old lady Lutoka. out the front. Yeah. Indian lady would give us some money. Yes. That's how she learned to live. Hmm. What about the other lady at um, down in Nandi every day, telling us about all the cancer that's taken her Bullshit family house, members? Right? Yes. And then, <laughs> then so we say, well, we'll come and cure come your cure sister. Them. Oh no, <laughs> she didn't want that. She got the money. Just wanted money. <laughs> Is there number two? I'm about ready to take number one off because of the pressure. So. Oh, is it that bad? Yeah, I think it's pretty <laughs> Well, put that one on one side and that's on the other, so you get less pressure. There you go.
And you got two pieces of soft material. Okay, it's repelling to turn on the other side. Yeah, I'm turn that in. Drilling? No. <laughs> okay, that's better. Oh, here's interesting from Press TV. Romney Mafia behind the Benghazi attack. I believe it. That was the ambassador. Mm. The Mitt Romney presidential campaign, the CIA Mormon Mafia, have embarrassing uh, questions to answer about the September 11 deaths of US Ambassador to Libya, Christopher Stevens, and three members of his staff in Benghazi, Libya. New information concerning responsibility for what happened in Benghazi on September 11th has now emerged as a favorite issue of Republicans and Romney supporters, who are accusing the Obama administration of failing to provide sufficient security for the Benghazi consulate. Repu Republicans are also eager to use the Benghazi killings to attack Obama's claim that the alleged death of Osama bin Laden in the spring of 2011 marked the definitive defeat of Al-Qaeda. And of course, we all know that he died years and years and years before. Mm. Mm. This issue was aggressively cited by Republican candidate Paul Ryan in his vice presidential debate with incumbent Dem Dem Democrat Joe Biden. Biden asserted that the U.S. intelligence community had told the White House that the Benghazi attack was a protest demonstration against an Islamophobic film which had turned violent rather than a militarily planned terrorist attack. This was the analysis repeatedly offered by U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Susan Rice in the days after September 11th. Biden also stated that the White House was not aware of requests for anti-terror reinforcements by U.S. consular officials in Benghazi. So far, the most important information about the Benghazi events has been ignored in the controversy between Republicans and Democrats. As the London Mail reported on September 19, 2012, all signs suggest that the attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi and the murder of Ambassador Stevens were carried out by forces under the command of Sufyan Ben Kumu, a notorious terrorist leader of the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, an affiliate of Al-Qaeda. Kumu, who once worked as Bin Laden's chauffeur, is a native of Derna, Libya, the city which US Army files suggest has produced more violent terrorists per capita than any other in the world. The US government knows everything about Kuma, who spent about five years as a prisoner in detention at Guantanamo Bay. Kumu was then sent back to Libya in September 2007, where he was set free by Gaddafi in an amnesty in 2010. Kumu currently heads the Ansar al-Sharia Brigade, also an Al-Qaeda affiliate. Clearly, the likely somebody, the likely way somebody like Kumu could be released from Guantanamo would be if he had become a double agent working for the CIA in the overthrow of Gaddafi. We therefore have a situation in which a reputed CIA asset has carried out the assassination of the US ambassador. The existence of a Mormon mafia within the CIA interested in staging an October surprise to help Romney get elected may provide the key to explaining these phenomena. <clears throat>
Okay, one authoritative source for the theory that the Benghazi attack was a protest demonstration gone violent was none other than CIA Director General David Petraeus, a figure who feels no special loyalty to Obama. Petraeus unites Pentagon and CIA networks. According to Fox News story dated September 27th, a congressional source told Fox News that CIA Director David Petraeus, during a briefing with members of the House Intelligence Committee three days after the attack, also espoused the view that Benghazi was an out-of-control demonstration prompted by the YouTube video. According to the source, this was shocking to some members who were present and saw the same intelligence pointing towards a terrorist attack. Petraeus is notoriously the darling of a neocon networks who are now actively supporting Romney. Is Petraeus using his current position to help Romney against Obama? Is Petraeus now actively allied with the Mormon Mafia inside his own agency? Disturbing questions about the role of the CIA in Benghazi were raised during an October 10th hearing of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee chaired by partisan Republican Congressman Darrell Issa. Issa, reputedly the richest man on Capitol Hill, sought to use the hearing to blame the Benghazi deaths on the Obama White House. Issa was assisted by Congressman Jason Chaffetz of Utah, a spokesman for the Romney presidential campaign, and like Romney, a leading member of the tightly knit and sectarian Mormon Church of Latter-day Saints. Issa, which have been condemned by Yahweh years ago. We joined them. You joined them. Mm. You were baptised as... Uh, I was baptised by the President of Australia, mm. the head of the state, the head of Sydney, the head of Southern Shire. And they knew Queen that Earth. you were the Christ. Oh, yeah. They had all of your genealogy yeah. and you condemned them mm. as being of the devil. Issa introduced Chavetz as the congressman who had started the entire investigation of Benghazi. Chavetz had just returned from a short fact-finding visit in Benghazi, along with other Republicans, but no Democrats. Issa's lead-off witness was Special Forces Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Wood of the Utah National Guard, who had actively sought to be heard as a witness. Wood had been the top security official for the Benghazi consulate for several months before the assassinations. Coming as he does from Utah, a state largely dominated by the Latter-day Saints, we may safely assume that Lieutenant Colonel Wood is either a member or an ally of the Mormon Church. Lieutenant Colonel Wood testified that he had asked the State Department in Washington for additional security personnel, but never received the requested reinforcements. But other witnesses pointed out that Wood's application had been incomplete since he never substantiated his request with descriptions of a specific threat, thus making it difficult to grant. A revealing incident occurred during the testimony of Charlene Lamb, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for International Programs in the Diplomatic Security Bureau of the State Department. Secretary Lamb, basically a policewoman, sought to describe the Benghazi events with the help of a satellite photo showing the US facilities in Benghazi. But Congressman Chavetz immediately became agitated, calling out, point of order, point of order. Chavetz wanted the photo hidden away and fast. We're getting into classified issues that deal with sources and methods that would be totally inappropriate in an open forum such as this, Chavetz explained. Secretary Lamb reply at the photo was entirely unclassified and in fact came from a commercial satellite. But the Romney backer Chavetz was implacable. I totally objected to the use of that photo. I was told specifically while I was in Libya, I could not and should not ever talk about what you're showing here today, Chavetz asserted. Chairman Issa said that the photo could remain on display and Secretary Lamb completed her prepared testimony. But while she spoke, various aides busily whispered in Issa's ear. By the time Secretary Lamb had finished, Issa ordered that the photo be taken down. In this hearing room, we're not going to point out details of what may still in fact be a facility of the United States government or more facilities. 
Issa, Issa argued. From subsequent references to another government agency, other government agency or other government entity, became clear that the additional building shown on the photo was in fact a CIA base, the home of a CIA rapid response force with between seven and 12 members. This force was comparable to the site security team, which Lieutenant Colonel Wood said he had requested in vain. It emerged from the hearings that these CIA personnel were not under State Department command. As Dana Milbank noted on October 11 in the Washington Post, the victims may have been let down, not by the State Department, but by the CIA. So where had this considerable CIA force been during the attack on the consulate? Why had the CIA failed to defend the American ambassador's life? Could the CIA Mormon Mafia somehow have been responsible for this failure? Was this why the Mormon loyalist Chavez was so anxious to hide the evidence? The existence of the CIA base had been first suggested by a September 23 New York Times article by Eric Schmidt, Helene Cooper and Michael S. Schmidt, which reported that more than two dozen American personnel had been evacuated from Benghazi on September 11th including about a dozen CIA operatives and contractors who played a crucial role in conducting surveillance and collecting information on an array of armed militant groups in and around the city. It might be more accurate to say that the CIA was providing liaison with armed groups in the infamous Benghazi Derna Tobruk or Cyrenaica terrorist corridor, terrorists which NATO was widely known to have been deploying into Syria through Turkey. But the question remained, why had the CIA forces not helped to defend the consulate when it came under attack? Was it to help manufacture an incident which Romney could use to defeat Obama? On October 11th, in his article entitled Security Lapses Indeed, Dana Milbank revealed in the Washington Post that his paper and the New York Times had been asked by the Obama administration not to reveal details about the CIA's Benghazi base. The late Ambassador Stevens had reportedly been in close contact with the militias of the Benghazi Derna Tobruk corridor since no later than 2008 when he has served as Vice Consul in Benghazi. His last visitor on September 11th was a Turkish diplomat who departed from the consulate at about 8.30 p.m. Was the subject of this meeting the deployment of more jihadists from Cyrenaica through Turkey into Syria? According to Levy M writing in the Daily Cause of September 14th, Stevens believed that he was safe because he routinely worked with Libyan militant groups in the area. But suddenly something changed. Levy Munk of the Daily Cause argues that working closely with Ambassador Stevens starting in March of April 2011 was evidently former CIA employee James F. Smith, a former director of the infamous Blackwater private military firm who became the boss of SCG International, a private security firm. According to a March 19, 2012 report by Yassan al Saadi. In the English edition of Al Akbar of Beirut, based on alleged emails from the private intelligence firm Stratfor, which that paper had obtained. These emails include a report that after the death of Colonel Gaddafi, Smith had been sent by the US government to contact Syrian opposition figures in Turkey to determine how they can help in regime change. According to one of the supposed Stratfor emails obtained by Al Akbar, source presumably James F. Smith and Dr. Walid Fares are getting air cover, political support from Republican North Carolina Congresswoman Myrick to engage Syrian opposition in Turkey on a fact-finding mission for Congress. The true mission is how they can help in regime change. Representative Sue Myrick, an Islamophobic reactionary, is a member of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. She has announced her retirement. Dr. Walid Fares 
has been named as a member of the Islamophobia Network in Fear, Inc., a 2011 report issued by the Centre for American Progress. This Islamophobia network, of which the best-known figure is the neocon John Bolton, Romney's chief foreign policy advisor and probable Secretary of State in a Romney administration, is implicated in the production of the anti-Muslim film which set off the protests in two dozen countries on and after September 11, 2012. Valid Fares is a lesbian, sorry, <laughs> is a Lebanese Christian <laughs> who was named on October 20th, 2011, as special advisor to Mitt Romney and co chairman of Romney's Middle East Advisory Group. According to Mother Jones, Fares in the 1980s was a close advisor to Samir Gagea a Lebanese warlord. Fares's appointment as a Romney advisor was also criticised by the Daily Beast, Politico Salon and the New Republic. So were reports that Fares had told a third party that Romney had promised Fares a high-ranking White House job helping craft US policy in the Middle East should the ex-governor win in 2012. Last paragraph. Ironically, when Secretary of State Hillary Clinton appeared to defend her policy at a conference on the Maghreb region held at the Centre for Strategic and International Relations on October 12th, she was introduced by the Mormon General Brent Scowcroft, a former National Security Council chief and close associate of Henry Kissinger, who is a grey eminence of the Mormon Mafia. Of course, if security was lacking in Benghazi, Mrs Clinton should be held responsible. She is, in any case, about to resign. So that was from Dr Webster Tarpley, an American columnist, activist, historian. He wrote the book George Bush, The Unauthorised Biography in 1992. Hmm. Now, interesting, the comments that said it was Mossad, plain and simple, trying to put Romney, who promised he'd nuke Iran by April into office and embarrass Obama and the CIA. There is no Mormon faction of the CIA. Langley has things quite well in hand after putting down all the people who let 9-11 slide through. The CIA is tasked with protecting America and its democracy, and that means putting down right-wing big business fascism and the GOP forever. It's occurring right before your eyes. Hmm, interesting. So who's putting them down at FBI? CIA. CIA, yes. They've Called, well, this is, this is just somebody writing in as a comment, saying it was Mossad. Yeah, well, mm. well, everything's more so. Okay. Where well, do you think I went to Ottawa? I went straight to Mossad in Ottawa. Yes. Come and kill me. Come and kill you. Well, you were the best shot, didn't work. Yeah. Um, You're Christ, he says. I know who the fuck you think I was. Mm. We Jews will run the world. No, you won't. You're not even Jews. Yeah, that's right. We shall forbid Christ. I'll see about that. Everything is designed to forbid you, babe. <clears throat> Crapping on about everybody else out there. <laughs> Anything that draw attention to you. The Christ. Well, is there any parting words for Poland at the moment? Hang in there. Just remember, God's a Catholic. Yes. Christ is a Catholic. You belong to him. Hmm. Okay, let's shut this down, babe. Well, that. Mm -hmm. Nine thirty-nine. Oh. Hasta la vista, baby. Hmm.